<laughs> this is going to be a shit show. What's going on, people? Welcome to the first episode of the GFY podcast. I'm Alex. I'm Jackson. And we're going to make some spicy memes. <laughs> no, this is the GFY podcast, and we're not telling you what GFY stands for. Although it's fairly obvious. I mean, my dad couldn't guess it. Really? <laughs> no. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, are, what, are we, what are we talking about first? Well, okay. Mm-hmm. Let's start with the fucking... You want to talk about the situation at Shorewood? Is there Last week? Is that going to be the first topic? Alright. Alright. So... We had some spicy memes. Uh, on was it the Thursday after last? Was it? Uh huh. Two Thursdays. Yeah. So two Thursdays ago, we had some spicy memes at Shorewood. Jackson and I were both in French class. Yeah. First period fucking French class. In fact, we were the only ones. Well, maybe not the only ones, but definitely one of the few who had data access. So we were getting constant updates from Snapchat on what like. What well, was unfolding? I mean, we weren't, like, the only ones with data, but we were the only ones actually bothering to check. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so this was the article from Seattle Times, not 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 Baskerville. Um, this was from after the incident at 11.37, updated 11.49. Uh, all of this stuff. Man, one... You want to explain what happened from your perspective first? Yeah. Yeah? Basically, we were in our classroom. I think it was like 47. I think I remember it was like 47. 847? It was, yeah, it was like 847. It was 847. Because we were there for two hours? Three hours. Three hours. Three hours? Although no, no, no. That would be two hours. Because 8, 9, 10, 45. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, so I just remember we were sitting in French class trying to do this, like, shitty art project that, that Megan gave to okay, us. Okay, but it wasn't shitty, though. It was hard, that's for sure, and it all went to shit. It was a tricolor roundel. It all went to shit after we heard the PA system come on, and we thought, okay, here comes a normal announcement. It's like, lockdown, lockdown, everyone get the fuck inside. And um, so, lock lights out of sight. Yeah. yeah that's shit. And I, I like how they had to specify this is not a drill. No, they didn't. They didn't. That's the thing. That's how we were tipped off that it wasn't a drill. Oh, because yeah, they yeah. didn't say that it was a drill. And then, uh, oh, uh, uh, three sides of glass. So we were in a very corner classroom. I think it was like, what, two, three something? Two, three. Two, three, oh, eight. I, sure. think that's the, I think that's the French room. It's on the very corner of the, the school, right? And we're surrounded on three sides by glass, you know, hallway here, and then there's the, the wall here and wall here, but both of them have glass facing the field in the parking lot. So and basically, hiding in the corner, <laughs> like, our class hiding in the corner would have gotten a shot, our, yeah. our class hiding by the window would have gotten glass spilled on exactly. us, there's our no class place. hiding by the other window would have gotten a shot and glass spilled on us. So, aka... The class didn't know what to do, so we sat in our desk like normal. Yeah. We sat in our class, and most of us continued doing the tricolor roundel. It, it was not a, In our class, it was not a lockdown. It was a lockout. Yeah, <laughs> that it was, was a lockout. We turned off the lights, closed the blinds, and that was pretty much it. The only time it got more serious was about, what, midway through? Because that's when we started getting news. No, no. Snapchat it was stuff. like around 9... Like 9.30? It was like 9.30, and you... Who gave us a Snapchat update? Oh, wait, really quick. I remember the first words I heard, uh, the, the first words I heard from, who was, who was next to us? Xander? Connor. Connor. The first words I heard from Connor was, we're going to be here for a long fucking time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was his yeah. first words. Oh, no, that was Xander. That was mm-hmm. Xander. Yeah. So, oh, man. So about, what was it, 9.30? Is that really 9.30? Yeah. So about 9.30-ish. And we uh, got a Snapchat where... It was confirmed that someone had made a threat, and no, someone, someone. I'm trying Which to remember. Mine? The the one with more fries. Okay. <laughs> the we got we got a Snapchat update, not an update, but we saw the the the, the post. Snapchat that, story. Yeah, we saw a Snapchat story from who again? Who showed it to us? I think you found it, didn't you? No, it was uh, it was Connor who found it, and it was someone had reposted a picture of a post. And so, and it was so like, Connor showed it to us, and it was basically someone taking a picture of their feet, 
that said, don't come to school tomorrow, you don't know what he's capable yeah. of. That he was Mulligan. And, the, and then, at the same time, uh, I was looking through my Snapchat, because just after we saw that, uh, I got out of my phone, because of course, you know, I got my Snapchat up. And I looked through all the stories of, like, the, the popular kids, you know, I added all of them. Gotta get that quality drama news first. I wasn't actually getting data by the window for the first, like, 30 minutes, so I was <laughs> slightly freaking out. Because I was... And then I got data eventually, yeah. and I saw a bunch of posts from, again, like... I'm, I'm not gonna say popular kids, because I hang out with them, and they don't like that term. So, like, kids who wear nicer clothes. And this, <laughs> kids who listen to... Clothes, kids yeah. who listen to rap. Sure. Like... <laughs> the... Basically, I had them add them on Snapchat, and we so we got a ton of Snapchat updates over the course of this time, which were like uh, different stuff about his motives and like whether he actually had a gun or not. I found out later he was on the second floor with a with the gun that he had. But apparently, according to uh, where was it? It's down here. Man, where was it? It was, it was some paragraph where it said, oh yeah, no, wait, go, uh, down here, so we had, we found this article later, and it says that additionally, the students who had reported seeing the boy at the high school with a gun later admitted that wasn't true, but they don't elaborate, yeah, and so like, I didn't, you said it was a BB gun, right? Yeah. Some well, people said that? They'd send, he'd send in a picture sometime, I don't know, when the actual picture came in, because, you know, it was sent around places. But uh, he had the some gun picture. Gun picture? But it was it was him with a strap, and it said, and, and I, oh my god, I can't remember what the post said. Yeah, I don't remember what it said either. But I remember later we found out that he was apparently looking for a girl and a teacher. I don't know. And I think that teacher was the dean of students, bro, and I think that girl no was the idea. one. And I think that girl was the one who posted like "Don't come to school tomorrow." Yeah. So, which tells me at least that the situation all happened after the "Don't come to school tomorrow" thing was posted. Yeah. And so a lot of people are saying that the snitch was the person at the wrong here because if she hadn't have posted that and just let the guy flex with a gun in his puck in his post, like then this whole situation wouldn't have happened because apparently he got mad because that was posting. He was like, fuck you for calling me a school shooter and shit. You remember yeah, that email he that sent stuff. to the dean of yeah. students? He sent an like, email to the dean of all people. Like, who who would send an email? And, and the thing is, the threat was last night. <laughs> this was all last well, night. We should no, not no, have no, even the, been at the, school. The night before, not literally last night. Or not last night, yeah. But, um, yeah, it was like, what, the night before at 10.47? So, like, someone must have seen it. <laughs> Probably the dean of students. Probably. Actually, no, I don't think the dean saw it till the morning, but the yeah, student, the, everyone else definitely saw it. Yeah. But the police had ample information to act. And by act, I mean just say, don't go to school tomorrow, guys. Or don't, by act, I mean literally just say, school is either delayed or canceled. Exactly. And that's all we have to resolve the situation. But instead, we got no warning of it, and so we got a lockdown instead. <laughs> well, because, okay, the thing is, is that they originally were going to do, uh, they had placed it under, I, I think what they called it was, like, low, what is it, low, like, low, low threat, low, it, it was like, no, it was, uh, I can't even speak. It was it was a low threat low threat lockdown. Yeah. Like what it was what it was is pretty much they had called extra police. And I remember seeing the two extra police officers the morning and I was like in the park. Man, there there usually aren't that, that many police officers here. And so we go into class and apparently they had called more officers in because they were investigating the situation, but they hadn't closed down the school. And so they were currently investigating a shooter situation while at a school. school while calling in school to happen. And although I get that uh, afterwards it wasn't actually a really based threat, there wasn't anything he actually would have done. Um, police, you what, mate? <laughs> like, I think 
Me, personally, the worst... Uh, well, first, before we get into the school being stupid, we gotta explain, like, the window that we were at. So, basically, uh, in my class, we we got a text that said he was coming, right? Or, not a text. Like, someone on Snapchat... Yeah, someone on Snapchat, Snapchat said Mulligan was coming to the school. So, and it's important to note that he was expelled at this time. From Shorewood. Yeah, right? he, he was expelled. Not expelled, suspended. Suspe- yeah, it was suspended, yeah. Huh. And, no, wait, did he get it? I don't know. Because apparently he was the one who did that bomb threat thing, but I... Apparently, I don't know. But, but basically, uh, we saw a text on Snapchat that said, like, Mulligan's coming. Or, not Mulligan. It just said he's coming. Yeah, yeah, he's coming, and, like, there was another thing that said, like, he was around the school somewhere. Yeah, so basically, and at the exact same time that Xander was showing us that post, a, uh... Connor. Uh, uh, that Connor was showing us that post, a white truck pulled into the parking lot, and we had the blinds closed, by the way, so there were a couple of people just kind of looking through the blinds. We, we had the blinds closed, and people were like, hey, wait, that, uh, this car just came in. And, and it parked, no one ever came out. Not even, not even after the situation yeah. resolved. Even during the evacuation, no one came out of that car. They so just we, popped and stayed there. So we thought that it was, the, we thought that it was the shooter. So what I did was I took my iPad because literally, uh, I don't remember her name, but it was the only girl in our French class with a hijab on. Uh, BB. I think that, I think it's BB. Yeah. I'm so, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry <laughs> if that's not your name. Well, but basically she, uh, she kept like standing up. Like fully, like yeah. wi- like yeah. entire op- upper body exposed in the window, and, course, and course, opening course, a big ass gap yeah. in the blinds and, and looking and, through. And of course, at this point, we are really hyped up because we saw all these Snapchat and things, and everyone's like not freaking hyped, out and all that <laughs> stuff. Well, we're, we're hyped. That's <laughs> like we're supposed to be excited to be hyped cold. to run. <laughs> but basically, she, like she kept looking through the window, and we kept seeing like get down. Yeah. So eventually, I came up with a solution, which was. Uh, open the blind slightly with tape and put my iPad camera through it, and I wasn't recording, we just looked at the iPad yeah. instead of, you know, through the window. It worked. It, it, it worked so for, we, for the most So part. we kept zoomed in on this white truck, and then we, and then someone, and then the girl, despite the iPad, like, still looks through and says, hey, there's like a green Mini pulling up, right? It turns out that green Mini was actually parents. Yeah, it was like parents who had come early, probably because someone had texted them or something. I don't know. But it was like parents, and they stayed in their car the entire time, but they got out at one point to, like, throw away a McDonald's cup. And I was like, um. But, yeah, so everyone was super sketched out by that car. And by the time the green mini pulled around, that was the moment of, that that was, like, the climax of the situation. Because yeah. everyone got really scared when the mini came in. Because we didn't know what was going on, and it's not like Shoreline Police were going to tell us anything, because it was all under investigation and all that stuff. And of course, uh, Shoreline Schools, on their website, they don't tell shit. And they, sh- they only said that the only emergency alert that they gave out was that there's a lockdown, we'll give you more information when it comes <laughs> around. <laughs> they never gave more information, by yeah, the way. Exactly. They, they never, one, they never gave us more information, and two, the only other announcement they gave until the evacuation announcement was to open up bathroom breaks, okay? We're talking bathroom breaks like, here. Like, pe- like, actively, like, some a staff member or a security officer, I can't remember. No, I think it was the it was a Shoreline School's security officer. Yeah. Uh, came by the door and was like, okay, if anyone needs to go to the bathroom, let's go quickly. So basically, I walked into the bathroom, and there were just a bunch of kids dueling in there. Of course there were. But, like, I... I, I I don't know. I didn't understand why they were letting us. Oh, also, let's not forget. Uh, I'm not gonna say his name right now, but uh, basically, he didn't want to miss French class. Oh my god! Yeah. No, so, he comes in halfway through the situation with a backpack and a hood on and all that, and the security officer opens up the door and says, yeah. "This guy didn't want to miss miss French class." <laughs> so he just walks in, like waltzes in, just like, "All right, I'm in French oh, class now." Yeah. Sits down like nothing's happening, and then he's like, "Wait, what's going on?" And we had, and I, I don't know who explained to him, but uh, it was, I think it was you. I thought it was. I, I only saw Logan once. You just class. said you didn't want to say his name. Fuck, sorry. Wow. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, he comes in and they're like, all of us are like, what the, how are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> you should be going. Did you not hear about anything? And it's like. The, the sad part is, is that in this entire situation where we got let out at 1045, he still decided to come to school. 
Really? Really? So, uh, going into the next part of this story, uh, basically, after... No, it wasn't after anything. I, I don't even remember what it was after, but pretty much after that green Mini Cooper pulled up, like, maybe 20 minutes after... 20 minutes. It was announced that... No, I remember. It was at... We were supposed... It was announced that... Uh, and this was all while the whereabouts of Mulliken was unknown. Yeah. Everything was unknown at this point, except through Snapchat, like, rumors. So, basically, there could have been an active threat... Could have. ...on campus. Could have, yeah. And they evacuated us. Yeah. They- by... No, and... By wing. <laughs> by wing, like, there's at least, like, maybe, at most, I'd say, like, a hundred students in each wing, right? Oh, yeah. So, they let a I mean, hundred... So about it this way, 30 students per classroom, and there's about... But I'm saying, like, at least, because there might be closed well, classrooms. Well, well, yeah, but what, what I mean is, like, you know, yeah, about 30 people per classroom, there's about 10 classrooms on a wing, on a floor, and then you times that by three. Mm. And that's not counting the gym, or the commons. And also, I remember... Um, yeah, I guess he's trying to be mentioned. Uh, Dylan was in the gym at this time. Like one of my friends, Dylan Wheatley, and he was in the he was in the gym, and <laughs> he he was in the gym during this time, and that was especially scary because I remember I mentioned as well, like the first floor is in genuine danger right now because the gym can be easily gotten into. Oh yeah, no, totally. And there's like the what? health classes and shit, like they're all in genuine danger, especially the health classes because all he has to do is come up to the window. Pop, pop. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, because all of them have these big ass windows, and they're right next to a big courtyard, which mm-hmm. is on the back of the school. And the gym has a door that can be, like, I'm pretty sure one kid proved that you could unlock the gym door with a butter knife. Yeah, <laughs> you can do any of the school locks with like pretty much anything. They're not good locks. The only thing with them is that if you get it wrong, it like auto breaks the lock, so you can't get in. But like, if you're not an idiot, <laughs> but basically, so the so we were the the school said we're releasing you guys like we're gonna get you out of school as fast as possible and i sort of saw the logic in it at the time but looking back on it they let at least 100 kids out at a time into an into <laughs> the possible like like literally like sending like, this situation was almost the equivalent of sending us out to go be shot. Because we didn't know where Mulliken was. Well, yeah. You think nothing was being told to us? And then, especially after they had released all the wings and all of us were waiting for our parents in the commons. I actually just got um, up and left. Yeah. For me, like, I just, like, snuck out. For me, I, I had to wait in the commons because my mom was already on her way. And so, you know. My, dad was, at, my dad was at work. I was about to abandon my mama. And so... I'm sitting there in the commons, and there's about, you know, 300, 400 people flat, like, in the commons, which is, you know, doubles as our The most room. accessible part of yeah. the school. There's giant-ass windows everywhere. There's access from both sides. Um, Even if you lock the doors, you can just shoot through the windows. And, of course, they could have locked the doors, because all of us were trying to get in and out and all that. And it's, and AKA, they, they, like, made a dangerous situation of grouping up students in classrooms to grouping up classrooms in the commons. (laughs) And there were 400 people at one time in a big-ass space with no cover besides, like, cables. And poles. Which we all know doesn't work from a certain shooting in the 90s. Ah, yeah. So, this, this whole situation was so messed up, but basically, looking back on it now, the school was... At, like, I cannot explain how stupid they were for letting us out when they didn't know if the threat was neutralized or not. Like, the police were looking for him and everything, and they he, they didn't find him. So, yes, theoretically, he could have been running away, but also he could have been, like, on campus at the time we were being released. Mm-hmm. And remember, the shooter isn't getting any information. Yeah. So if he was there, like, although he had no... Uh, I... I I, I don't have enough information on this situation to be on the side of free Mulliken or keep Mulliken locked up. But yeah, I know that's a big debate. But I do think that... Oh, God, I lost my train of thought. I, I, I do think that 
he didn't have any intentions of a mass shooting, but because but the police didn't know that. The police, I, I think, I think actually the police thought he did have intentions of a mass shooting. So, and I don't know what the police were thinking of the situation, but I know the school thought that he had intentions of a mass shooting. Yeah. And so, if the school is going to let us out when they don't know where the shooter is, like, y'all realize how stupid this is, right? Like, I don't have to explain why. You're letting us go outside in clumps of people to either the parking lot or the commons. Yeah. Like, in clumps of people, like, just walking out in the open. Especially in the courtyard, that would have been the worst part. Like, out in the open. While the shooter could potentially be on campus. By the way, this is a complete sidetrack from this whole story, but can we just appreciate how we're talking about Shorewood High School in Washington, but here's Shorewood High School in Wisconsin. Spokane? Spokane? Uh, uh, it, yeah, that makes sense. so basically, be, obviously, since we're still here, uh, the shooter wasn't there, and I think, I don't know, again, this is a rumor, but I think I heard that he was in Vancouver, B.C. Yeah. At the time. <laughs> there were two different, there were three different things. There was one that he was in Renton, one that he was in uh, Central Oregon, and the other that he was in Vancouver, and all three of them he was doing, like, you know, online threats. Which, by the way, all three of them were absolute bullshit, in fact, I think the online threat was made by the person who said don't come to school tomorrow. Yeah. He was kind of just flexing a gun on Snapchat. But there was also a... I'm not saying the person who reported it is, like, at fault here. That's perfectly fine. That's definitely... You definitely should be doing that yeah. in most situations. But you do have to think, like, if she hadn't have done that, there would have been no situation. We yeah. wouldn't even be talking about this. This podcast probably wouldn't exist. <laughs> yeah, because we came up with this entire idea, like, the, the French class after uh, all this, like, situation stuff, and we were like, man, we had some stuff to talk about. <laughs> you know, th there's some things happening now. Uh, <sighs> my, my number one point about this whole situation wasn't what happened, because everyone's all right. I'm over it. I'm not over the school letting us out while there's potentially an active shooter on campus. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that's the main part that we so should, dumb. in my opinion, although it would have been fucking torturous, we should have been in that class till like five in the afternoon well, or something like that. Well, that that's because that's the time when they confirmed it. And remember, well, he was arrested the day after. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Look, and, uh, yeah, they would have had no, to let us out of school eventually, but we should have been in there for a lot, a lot longer. <laughs> In connection with the earlier lockdown cancellation of classes at Shortwood High School. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Thursday afternoon. That was Thursday morning. So, yeah, he was arrested that afternoon. Yeah. So, if they could have just wait... He was arrested that afternoon. I didn't know that. So, literally, he was arrested that afternoon. So, we should have just waited until he was arrested. Yeah. And that afternoon, while it would have been tedious and horrible, and we would have been stuck in a French classroom for, like, seven hours... And who wants to be stuck in a French classroom for seven hours? We wouldn't be dead. That's the main thing. That's the point. We wouldn't be dead, and we would go home and be like, alright, he got arrested. It's fine. But we should not have left at 11.45 that morning. We should have left at, like, 8 that afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh... No. Wait a minute, hold up. Eight that afternoon. Eight is not in the afternoon. Okay, whatever. We, we should have left sometime, like, after. We, we should have left when he was arrested, basically. And we didn't. We left way earlier than we were supposed to, and he could have even been on campus, and it was just horrible. How, basically, this is how not to handle an active shooter situation at your school. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. The safest thing you can do while there is a shooter on campus is lock up your classroom. Yeah. Like, that's not inherently safe, but the safest thing you can do is lock up your classroom. Yeah, like, pretty much. I mean, that's all you can do. Until the police can neutralize it, just stay in your class, honestly. Yeah, because, that, like, that's the main problem is, like, 
news reports and all that, you know, they, they were coming out and all that stuff, you know, that morning, like, oh man, there, there's a, there's an active shooter situation at uh, Sherwood High School, but they didn't actually confirm anything or tell us anything until like the day after, right? And that's, you know, after he was arrested, but still, they didn't confirm anything. Principal sent out an email saying there they're, they're, uh, was no viable threat. <laughs> Bullshit, because, you know, you still kind of dicked all of us out because we were all thinking that we were going to die, you know? We were at least thinking, like, I remember I was thinking, I remember my thought process at about, like, 10.45 was that someone's going to get shot on the first floor. Yeah. Like, that was my thought process because I, cause I thought at the time that Mulliken was on campus, and that's why I was especially, like, horrified that we were being released because I thought he was on campus yeah. and he was like hiding from the police. Well, I'm, I'm just remembering the, the, here's the first, like, it, it, this happened within the first hour was, uh, it was one thing that I remember specifically hyped or, or like scared us the most was when the first Snapchat started coming out, all of the popular kids <laughs> on those stories, they were they were posting like you know just plain black pictures, but it had the text like you know pray for Shorewood. We're thinking of Shorewood. You know, that freaked me out the most. See, no, no, but the thing is that okay, so the comments is here, and French class is here. Wait, can we pull up on the map? I don't think there is like no, there's no. gotta be one online. Hold fine. on, I want to look. Fine, fine, yeah. Where's the? No, no, wait, hold. On. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, wait, hold. On. Yeah. Let's see here. Images. Blueprint, maybe? Oh, wrong high schools. Wrong high school. Look this up is the Illinois. Blueprint. Look up the blueprint. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Are you saying there are there are three Shorewoods? There's Wisconsin and Illinois? Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> um look up Shorewood High School. Shoreline. Shoreline Shorewood High School group. Man. Okay. <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, the map, yeah. Something. No. Oh, damn it. Is that Shore Crest? Why is it showing a Shore Crest? I I don't know. So Wait, is there? Model, yeah, but is there a model for Shorewood like that? We could still do something with that. Mm -hmm. Actually, no. Wait, hold on. <laughs> of course. So, bring this up here, and we go to satellite. All right. And so, so we were like there. And, uh, hold up. Here. Uh -huh. So, no, from here, we were... here's the comments. No, 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 we were staring down the special yeah, yeah. Not, so, the, not the garden. Yeah, no. So we were like there. We're, no, we're hurt. There. Okay, so here's the comments, right? Uh, no, no, no. What? Because I remember, because our window was looking at another wing. Do you remember in our French class? Yeah. So we so were there. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we were right here, right, right about there. There. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the second floor. And here's the comments here, which if I rotate this again, yeah. Here's the main entrance of the school. And. We thought when those texts started coming out, like saying "pray for Shorewood" and all that, we can't hear the comments from here, and we thought the shooting had already happened, mm -hmm. and well, they weren't that, telling us yeah. anything, because of course they wouldn't be able to go on the intercom because the office is right next to the commons, mm -hmm. and so we we were getting really scared for about 20 minutes until like, you know, more Snapchat started coming out. We realized that no, it wasn't happening right now, but 
for a good 20 minutes, we thought that he had come in through here, and we were just stuck here. After that 20 minutes, we all thought he was going to come into this parking lot, and that's why we saw that white yeah, truck. Yeah, the, the white truck parked right there, and then the, the mini parked right there where that car is. Mm -hmm. Also, rest in peace. This this picture was from before the field was completed? Or, or before anything was completed. Yeah, before all of this was done. So it that, looks weird. That's a spicy meatball. At least the school's complete. <laughs> that's true. But yeah, so this situation was messed up, and the school should not have let us out as early as they did. That was insanely stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like literally, people could have died. If the shooter was there, yeah. and if he had intended to do a mass shooting, because I know he didn't, but yeah, I think we have pretty much all of that on the, yeah. on the shooting situation. So, what do you want to move up to? Why not world news? No, let's start with useless Seattle news. Let's start with some useless Seattle news <laughs> because we King all, five. yeah, we all know that King Five produces the best and top quality content in the Pacific <laughs> Northwest. I want to die. Um, let's see here. Local news. What's up here, guys? YouTube videos. I don't like videos. Okay. So they're gonna close the Alaskan Way Viaduct for the first time, or for the fourth time in the last two years. <laughs> they've been like threatening to blow it up. Well, not threatening. They've been saying no. they're gonna blow it up for like three years now. Yeah. I don't even get. Uh, stop closing things, guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Seizes <laughs> $87 million worth of cocaine. Okay, we need to see this. I'm sorry. We gotta, like, actually, like, look into this. No. 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 Beautiful. Anyway. <laughs> what the... Oh. Okay. Memes. Um. So Fifty-day counter drug mission. Oh, this isn't even here. Why is this local news? What? Oh, the cutter from. Oh my god. <laughs> we thought. Oh, so we thought this was off the coast of Port Angeles. So they didn't seize 5,794 pounds of cocaine off, off Port Angeles. That's good. It was off the That's coast good. of South America, but oh, it was oh, so from, the, the ship was sorry, from Port Angeles. Sorry, 5,794 pounds of cocaine and other illicit narcotics. So we're just talking about drugs in general here. How much weed was on that? We don't care how much weed was on that. Boat. I care how much, because I want it. <laughs> Sure. Uh, also, by the way, who names their who names a ship the active? That that, that is quite literally the name of the ship. Eleven tons of cocaine. Wow. Wow. Okay. Eleven tons. And it's crazy to think like. Like, Coke is like, what, $20 a gram? Do I don't know. Do you think I know drug prices? I, <laughs> no, I don't either. I but, don't know drug prices. Like, that's all 11 tons. Do you know how many grams that is? <laughs> Do you think I paid attention in IPSH? Because I didn't. <laughs> Let's see here. So, I clicked on, these are 2018's best luxury vehicles for seniors. And it brings you to a search that does nothing. Well, we're not old people. We don't need this. Don't you want that 2018 BMW X5? I don't. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Let's see what other stories there are. Local news. There's the 20 safest cities. cities in no one cares. Seattle's gonna We're be not like, safe. Seattle's going to be like 19. <laughs> Trump's opinion piece takes on Medicare for all. Um, oh, this is all local. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Fun things we love about fall. Bro, I don't like fall. Um, I like fall just because it's aesthetic, but I like winter more. That's true. That's true. You're right. Yeah, that's nice. But that's not local news, though. That's in Idaho. You does that. Cool. Yeah, my mom describes baby sun paralysis. Oh. Bothell firefighter describes oh. people on the worst day of their lives. Oh. Now, they're doing more on that project? This is, it's been how long since <laughs> they started doing 520 stuff? Uh, so how long has it been? Oh, what about our NHL team? That's actually That's interesting. You see how long this we're getting a hockey team soon. And that might mean we're getting, and that might mean an update, like a renovation for Memorial Stadium, which would mean the Sounders would get to move in. Oh, let's see. To Memorial Stadium instead of playing at Century Field. So Seattle CEO reveals more about Seattle hockey team. They don't even know what colors yet. I mean, it has to be green. Let's see. Here. Well, yeah, probably. It has to be. Look, you, you can get so many hype troll students a, to build to build a team facility. Northgate. North Gate. Yeah, at the mall, like by the mall. Their training facility is going to be like by Northgate Mall. Do you know how much traffic is going to add on to the already <laughs> enormous amount of traffic <laughs> that goes to the Northgate Mall, the Northgate Theater, and now the training facility? And they're going to have light rail there? Yeah, it's going to be a fucking mess. Okay, actually, no, that will be nice in 2021 because then we can just take light rail from 145th down to uh, like Northgate. It's pretty great. We could take light rail from like. Like, you could theoretically, like, there's no more bus, there's no, there's not even more Uber. You could just take the light rail from fucking Richmond Beach down to, like, Capitol Hill. That's true. Like, that's gonna be good. That's Wait, no, our colors can't be green and blue because the yeah. Canucks already have them. Fuck. Okay, it either, and then, in that case, it either, it either has to be green and gold, like, kind of like the Sonics, or black and, or, but not black and red. Like, that's what's being oh, yeah, advertised. If a war franchise, they'll likely reveal that there may be some difficulty with the colors of the team based on other franchises having some of the traditional Seattle sports colors. Yeah, exactly. See? AKA green and blue. I mean, we could do uh, blue and white, but at the but, same time, the Thunderbirds have blue and white. And I well, don't know the Thunderbirds has... don't matter. <laughs> yeah, but they're, because like, pretty much their only team right now. Yeah, the only team right now that are like hockey are, fanatics and, in Seattle. And they, and they about, play but... down in, like, Tacoma, I think. No, they play in Kent. Kent? Yeah. They play at Showwear Center in Kent. I used to be into hockey when I was in, like, fifth grade. I know this. But, like, I'm kind of, I feel kind of sorry for the Thunderbirds, because, like, they were, like, the top hockey team in Seattle. Now they're going to be, like... Second rate. They're not even going to be second rate. They're just going to be like non-existent almost. It's like it's like comparing a youth soccer team to the Sounders. <laughs> like it's going to be like that. Good meme. Good meme. Wait, let's look at what the, what it's supposed to look like. Look up images. Are there any other colors? For are there any other teams with green and gold? Any, in the NHL, I don't know. I mean, the same colors that we have for the Supersonics. I personally think we should have red and black just because the Met or, or green and red because the Metropolitans were the first ever um, the the Metropolitans were the first ever hockey team in Seattle and they actually won the first ever Stanley Cup. Have you know like successes? But, yeah, but the Metropolitan. I think we should have the Metropolitans back. History. Yeah. They were the first team to ever I'm win the Stanley that. Cup. Look up Seattle Metropolitan really quick. And the thing is, like, Seattle actually has a decent hockey, um, like, following. Okay, I like, can see that. I can see that. When I was into hockey in, like, fifth grade, I remember I went to the facility and there were, like, a thousand people there. Like at an ice rink just to play hockey, so okay. it has a decent following actually in Seattle, and I, it's obviously bound to just get more popular if we get a team or when we get a team. But yeah, I think we should have the Metropolitans logo in colors. Totally. If we can't have green and blue and compromise with the Canucks. No, we'll just we'll just steal the Canucks. Let's just do that. Oh. We'll, we'll just steal the Canucks. <laughs> do you know how um you know how have you ever heard the story about how when the Canucks lost this 
uh, final of the Stanley Cup, they like rioted in the streets right. of Vancouver. Look up the video <laughs> on YouTube. But like, so apparently the Vancouver Canucks fans, like, oh yeah, my God. it was in 2011. Oh they God. rioted oh because they lost. So basically, we turned this in. So the Sounders fans, because I'm a Sounders fan, I know all this. In the ECS, we turned that into a chant. Right against the Vancouver Whitecaps, their soccer team, and, a, a and basically our chant for that is "We don't write when we lose." <laughs> we don't write when we lose. It's it's that, and it's fucking funny. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, let's do this. In a very dangerous situation in that city, and our Josh Elliott. Elliott has been tracking all of this overnight nasty. Yeah, as we can really? see, I mean, it was a terrifying scene there in really? Vancouver. Really, and the and thing that and you know, like, this butt hurt. The thing that makes me the most like um concerned about the situation. These are Canadians. <laughs> These are the ones that are supposed to be nice. Even the Canadian military, their primary role is like aid. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know Canada, you know, you well, know this is messed up because they're being more violent than their military. <laughs> well, well, I mean, except for their expeditionary forces. But, yeah. But otherwise, it's like, seriously, I never understood Like, Canadians. Canadians are great. What are you talking about? No, but, like, why did Vancouver... Because they like hockey. I like hockey, too, I must say. I like it. I don't love it. That's just because I'm not into it anymore. You're right, you're right. Let's see here. Like, I'll go to a, th I'll go to a Thunderbirds game and, like, have a hot dog and watch some hockey. That'd be fun. But, like... You want, you want, you, 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 you want to click on this tab? Do we want to get into controversial Do shit? Do you want to? Do you want to? Oh, well, this was a live stream. We can ask people. <laughs> yeah, all this shit looks boring. Besides, wait, what? Why do you ask Mick Morris Rogers to start? I don't understand. I've been to Wazoo. That, oh, that was actually fun. Wazoo's a really nice campus. <laughs> you know how the campus? You know. Yeah, they do. <laughs> But why does that have this Uh yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh I don't know, but I really don't like how it glows whenever you put your thing over. <laughs> no. No, why? <laughs> the, the funny thing this is This is the most annoying color. The funny thing is Ads on your computer are always based off your, like, search history on, like, Amazon or something. Oh, because I looked up hoodies. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get another hoodie. <laughs> Not this kind of hoodie, though. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't get that kind of hoodie. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. Just in the left. Off. Don't worry, I'm skinny. I'm, like, in, insanely skinny, and you're fairly sized. I'm not gonna fairly say... Fairly sized. I don't think you're fat. Fairly sized. Oh, wait. I, I know something we could talk about. Our American football team's actually doing well. <laughs> let's let's transition into show. Oh my god! Okay, so Seahawks isn't actually being shit. Just kidding, just kidding. They weren't shit the last few years, but I like um, they didn't fail. Unlike the Mariners, and we're never going to talk about the Mariners for another like ten years. Well, the Mariners are actually doing really good this season. Apparently, like really good this season. They were doing really good until like halfway, and then just. Failed miserably. Just like my grades. <laughs> Are you in like all honors or something? Shh. Well, except for math. Okay. Except for math because. Normal, uh, oh, yeah, and I'm also in normal bio because screw honors bio if I'm taking AP World History. Screw that. I ain't doing that. <laughs> More summer homework. <laughs> but basically, our American football team, the T Birds, are actually doing well. Like really well. Like we've, all, yeah. I think we've only lost once. No, no I'm talking about Shore Woods. Oh, Shore. <laughs> okay. I thought you meant like ours, as in Seattle. You know, I don't give a flying fuck about the Seahawks. Yes, but you said just American football teams in general. Yeah, I thought. I, thought, I said let's transition into Shore Woods stuff, and then I said that. Anyway, <laughs> where are you? He's right behind the camera. Yeah, there, there. Ah! 
But yeah, okay, wait, let's look up, like, West Coast shit. Let's just see if there's anything about us being Shorecrest for the first time in, like, ten years. Oh, yeah. Turns up the defense to be right of Shorecrest and Rotary Cup. It was actually a fun game. Oh, yeah. No, like, it was actually really fun. You know, the fourth row surrounded by a bunch of assholes. They were all <laughs> jumping and stuff. Yeah, it was, it was pretty great, pretty great. <laughs> First one over the road since 2014. 2014. Are you kidding me? It's but been four years. <laughs> four four years. fucking you know, years. You will have to admit, we did, we did roast them. A lot. Like, four senior classes have been through Shorewood since we've beaten. <laughs> since we've beaten. Like, okay, one sec. Okay, we're gonna go back to... The Seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's... I think I was there so, as well. Yeah, we lost... Yeah. See, we were doing... 42 to 22. But, like, we got points. The thing about the one this year was that they didn't get shit. Like, we totally blocked them out. <laughs> yeah. Like, completely. Yeah. And the sad part is, is that they're a team that were able to get 42 points. And they got zero. <laughs> and I think I think we're the only team that Shortcrest has lost to this year as well. Let, let's check the... Can we check the standings for Wesco? I think we can see, um, like... Like, I remember that game, like, the only thing that was running through my mind was, like, what the fuck, we're winning? <laughs> we're the, winning first time, the first thing we got, like, an interception or whatever it's called, right? And, like, I was genuinely completely surprised. I was like, wait, we did I'm something good. West Cup. No, aren't we at, like, the bottom thing? The bottom. So, we are right now. I think it's... Fuck it, let's just go to Seattle Times again. <laughs> there we are. Uh, no, that's Shorecrest. Shorewood. Uh, How do you read this? I don't know. The conference overall. Huh? So, Shorewood... Is that one? I don't understand. Okay, apparently it's just dupl duplicated. But we're at one and three. Wait a minute. 2005? Wait, hold on. Is, is this actually from 2005? Do I recognize any of these players? One sec. I don't, I don't think this is current. Look up 2018. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that would be a little better. Actually, let's go here. Let's see. Okay, so it doesn't exist, but it's on the first page <laughs> of Google. What? <laughs> um. Oh wait, West Coast. I know that's the one I just clicked on. Yeah. I'll go look up Shoreward on my iPad and it like last year and it went to that fucking an insurance company <laughs> called Shorewood. It was so Shorewood annoying. Insurance. It was every time I just typed in Shorewood and I expected the iPad to take me right to the Shorewood website. Good meme, good meme. Yeah, it's our, our American football team is like Shorewood. Yeah, honestly. They need their own section at the homecoming. Because we actually do okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now we are at least. Um, we were shit before. Our goal is to win and the focus is on him. Um, where, where's the info? Maybe? I don't know. This is who... 
Oh god, was this made in Microsoft Paint? Photo coming soon. Let's see, we got five wins, two losses. That's it's okay. Good. And they're going We're above and, and, Shorecrest. Yeah, Shorecrest is going four and three. Okay, okay. We're above Shorecrest. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Good memes. Snowhomish is the only school that's better than us right now. And aren't we, didn't we play them the other day? Uh, I think. Yeah, we did. Can I win one. One sec. Let me see. Wrong thing. Uh. Da -da -da. Cedar Crest. That's up the race. No, because it already happened, I thought. Mm -hmm. Everett. Dude, are we just not. Oh, this is the whole thing. Marysville Getchell. So, uh, I guess the only games that count are games that are in West Co. then, and the other ones are just friendlies. <laughs> yeah, I guess? Sure, because from what it looks like, the only ones that count are the ones you're playing against. Sure. I don't know. We'll have to ask someone about <laughs> it. We'll funny. ask someone the at the captain, about the, it. The captain of our football team lives right across the street over there. <laughs> like, directly over there. I could genuinely just knock on his door and be like, hey, so, uh. <laughs> hey, you want to talk to us about football? Maybe we'll invite him on the podcast if we win, like, the fucking championship somehow. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, don't click on a progressive ad. <laughs> Progressive, no. Okay. What the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> we need to see this quality Photoshop job. What the fuck is that? <laughs> the most threatening planes in military history? Yeah, this is historical. Yeah. What the... Okay. Oh, and there's that ad again for the hoodie. <laughs> okay, but are they saying that a... Like, what is it? C5 Galaxy? Are they saying that that's threatening? Question mark? It's a transport plane. I'm doing it. You can't be real. You can't be real. End up being destroyed. Let's go play it on Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Come on, that's not. Real. Okay, keep going now. <laughs> we gotta see more of these things. That looks like a potato! <laughs> China what? <laughs> China what? See, okay, I can respect the MiGs, right? But at the same time, I mean, if we're comparing that to like an F-22, I don't know. They're saying that these are, like, the most threatening. It's a radar plane. What? If we want to go by most threatening, the teeth, the, the fucking... The jet we have now that we're spending, like, $2 million per plane on <laughs> is what we should have on that list. Like, I guess, like, it existed, but it's not more threatening than the Strato Fortress. Question mark. Is that no. came before it? It was replaced by it. <laughs> like, okay, this is that Russian? Yeah. Yeah. Like, sure, I can I can get this one, I guess. Is this just Fre the Boeing freighter is a threatening <laughs> it's a commercial aircraft that's in use currently. <laughs> If, if the army uses commercial aircraft, I'm ashamed of our military. Well, we, we can use, like, commercial aircraft, but not as, like, fighters, <laughs> as transports, refueling aircraft that, like, ah, I don't remember what that one was. But let, 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 let's see here and see. Okay, see, I can respect this choice. I can respect this. Super mean Spitfire's lit. This... 
This is the big ass plane. This is a transport plane. How is this threatening? Guys, what? That's a big ass. Oh, wait, do you want to go on Nuke Map? On what? Do you know what Nuke Map is? No. Look it up. Look up nukemap.com. It'll just take us straight to the site. Except the, the false hands. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't exist. Okay, just look up Nuke Map then. I know it's on. There we go. So you could just drop any bomb that's ever existed in existence, and any any atom bomb, over any city you want. Why does this exist? Because it's it puts into perspective nuclear weapons. Like, hey, have you ever dropped? You want to see what it looks like when you drop the Czar Bomba over Seattle? <laughs> well, I have been told by some people that they do want to drop a nuke over the Seattle area. So you know. Well, if you were to drop the Zarbon bomb over the Seattle area, it would instantly evaporate, <laughs> or it would instantly. What what's the word for it? Like vaporize. Yeah, it would instantly vaporize the greater Seattle area, like pretty much all of it. That's not a joke. So, other effects: casualties and radioactive fallout. <laughs> Launch multiple. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay. And yeah, then, I think it would blow up the entire Seattle yeah. area. Yeah. It would... To check the initial... Um, so, like, zoom in, zoom in on right, Seattle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, holy shit. Edmonton. No, even past that. I've been to Edmonton. Bro, we're going all the way to the middle of the <laughs> fucking tundra. In the middle of Saskatchewan. No oh. one even lives there. That's nuclear weapons for you. Uranium City! <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Uranium City, Canada, and you won't get affected by the fallout. So you'll have anyway, one and a quarter million wait, fatalities. Wait, you go down here. Yeah. Because that, that's the stuff that instantly vaporizes everything. Fireball radiation is yellow. So, pretty much all of Seattle and most of Shoreline. Bro, the thing reaches out into the middle of Puget Sound. Yeah. I know, no, actually, excuse me, you can still be up in Bitter Lake. <laughs> you can still be up in Shoreline. The, the air blast radius will hit us, though. That'll destroy buildings. Thermal so the, radiation. Like, the total explosion will blow up, like, all of the Seattle. Yeah, no, totally. So, I think my friend down in Vancouver would be very happy because he wouldn't have to deal with us anymore. And the fallout depending on where you actually could go from Edmonton to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, it really does depend <laughs> on the wind. Well, that's just if the wind is somehow Honestly. blowing that way. I would go down to Mexico, wouldn't it, if you just turned this this it, way. Yeah. Or we could send that across the ocean to Japan <laughs> or something like that. Missile map. You shouldn't have sent me this by the way. <laughs> now you're nerding out. Uh, sure. A V2? If we sent a V2 across the ocean? <laughs> I'm sure. Damn. Let's export to Nuke Map. Uh, <laughs> Alright, we just dropped it in the middle of okay. Alright, what city do you want to Where do you want to put it? We can type in a name. No, but presets. Oh my, that's anywhere. Yeah, I'm saying let's put it in a city that exists, like Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I 
れなかったです。エアブースターサーフェス。エアブースターサーフェス。ホーリー It's not that much. That's seven million people. It's not that much. That's, that's seven million, million people. Okay, fine. No, actually, wait. Hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So let's do. Just to get more casualties in. What have you done? How? <laughs> How did I just. Screwed up OBS! <laughs> There we go. Okay, now, now we're here. So it's got the friends. Let's drop it over in Grenoble. Our friend's future's home city. Grenoble. Grenoble. Yeah? Wait, what bomb are you dropping? 100,000 kilotons. Oh. oh, that's not. Like, what? That would reach Lithuania. <laughs> that would literally no, no, reach no, no. Lithuania. So, so you can really tell where the population centers are because if you drop it here and it goes through Prague and Munich, it only. <laughs> I feel dumb saying this, but it only kills 444,000 people. But if you put it up in Paris. It goes through all of, you know, Belgium and the Netherlands and northern Germany and it just murders everyone. Okay, well. Okay, why don't we actually drop a bomb that has existed? Like, actually drop a bomb. Castle Grappa? The you, largest. You know that the SAR Bomba was 100,000 megatons. Or, I mean, 100 megatons. Let's drop the Castle Grappa. The largest US bomb that was tested. 50 grand. That's sad. <laughs> Castle Braga. Ottawa. Why? Let's drop it on Ottawa. <laughs> Why are we dropping it on Ottawa? <laughs> Because we can't. Is that how you spell that? Is that how you spell it? I don't even know how to spell Ottawa. Yeah, I so. Okay, good meme. I just realized it's on the screen. Is that the Castle Braga? Let's see the, no, let's see the, um, the, the designed version of the Tsar Bomba, like, the biggest <laughs> one. Okay. No, no, the designed one is, like, even bigger than the Tsar Bomba that was actually dropped. That's the one I was on, a hundred thousand! Boy! Boy! Okay, let's drop it on Vancouver. <laughs> Because... Vancouver or BC? Course. Okay, good. At least it didn't put it in the middle of Washington State. The city. That's how many people will die? Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, no. Alright. Never mind. Ooh! Want to multiply? Let's drop it over fucking, um, what's the city called again? The useless one in Washington? Port, port, um, port something. Port Townsend? Port yes. Angeles. Port Gamble? Which one? This place. Port Roberts. Let's drop it over Port Roberts. So, just as a little bit of a, like, explanation, Port Roberts, here, can you zoom in on it? Uh, That little nugget, which you、It's, have to go through Canada to get to Blaine. And there's no ferry. There's no ferry. Yeah, so there's a small point of the US border that cuts off this tiny little part of Canada. <laughs> and Point Roberts would. And Point Roberts is cut off by it. And only like a few people live there. I mean, it's not even that. Like, like a couple thousand. <laughs> yeah, see, because there's, there's US Customs. Yeah. At Point Roberts. And, like, you know, it's a fairly sized town. 
There's a school district. Wait, Blaine's school district? Can you imagine being the poor asshole who has to go in into Blaine's school district from Point Roberts? And then, oh man, going up to high school. Oh, where's the nearest high school? In Blaine. Oh, that means we have to go over here. But yeah, so let's see if it actually can go to Point Roberts. Oh my god, it can. Yes. Detonate. Let's turn off the drop multiple so that we can just see what happens. So, Zara Bamba on Point Roberts. Who would drop it on Point Roberts? <laughs> Why is Point Holy Roberts it? Because it would also take out Victoria. Dude, that is a fucking like, <laughs> Wow, that, I like how that's the only thing you care about. You don't care about the, the, the secondary capital <laughs> of the British Empire. You just care about Camp or Kyla. <laughs> Camp or Kyla was fun, alright? Yeah. Everyone from Canada just looks at you and says, fuck you. <laughs> like there's anyone from Canada watching this podcast. No, no one, no one is going to watch the podcast. <laughs> We're just going to accept it. Oh, man, it would take out Bellingham, too. That's why this is so bad. <laughs> but Everett would be fine. Well, um, um, third degree burns. Mushroom cloud oh. dimension. We can change the wind speed. Sir. That's good. So that we can like control our. Holy shit. Wow. Okay. So that's the crater. That's the crater. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fuck. Wait, how did we go from talking about Shorewood football to nuking Point Roberts? <laughs> <laughs> how the shit did we do that? Let's go to the next subject. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. The YouTube trending page. Oh, God. So basically, the trending tab on we, YouTube is not the most another. viewed videos of the week. It is what YouTube wants on the trending tab. I got them for us. Yeet. <laughs> um, let's just say it's not the most enjoyable thing. And although some people like looking through it for entertainment, I like looking through it for torture. <laughs> so the first three things are okay. It's just, a, it's just a review that's, that's like two years seven. late. Oh no. I've never seen this. Why? Because Disney wants more money. <laughs> Actually, that's exactly why, because Disney wants more money. Yeah. This is such a slow trailer. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. I I'm not interested. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. Either. Okay, let's keep scrolling down. Well, there's your meme of the week, people. Lamp. Why? Why are the fucking lamps? Why are the fine bros making a video about this? Why do the fine bros still exist? Okay, I'm gonna watch that on my own. I need to see how adults react to the lamp meme. Uh, yeah. So YouTube only puts the things that they want on the trending tab. They don't. They don't put what's actually the most viewed. Like. Then you just get a bunch of videos from like eight years ago. 
or no, no, trending is in like this week, like the most viewed videos of like the week or even up to the day. It, it's usually updated to the day, but YouTube doesn't put videos that like they only put videos that they like, and YouTube has a very cancerous liking to videos, basically. You get a bunch of BuzzFeed shit and trailers and, like, songs and shit, but you never get actual videos that people genuinely like on the trending tab. You just get shit like this. What the fuck is YouTube? A shit show. So far, I've seen exactly one video that I would ever watch, and especially not that one. No, why? Why is there not? A, why is there not a not interested thing? Well, I, I like Hayden Dawson. Okay. I really like that series on Jake Paul. It's oh, actually really good. Okay, we're just gonna gloss over that fact. <sighs> mm. Oh yay, another dead channel. I'm not saying I particularly enjoy Jake Paul's content. I just like Shane Dawson's content. And Shane Dawson's content with the fucking Jake Paul thing is pretty good. Why? Why does this exist? Ellen and Ninja. Do we end it on that? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Fortnite, by the way. No. Fuck. This is why we can't have nice things. This is why America is collapsing. This is why we're all gonna die. Curse Fortnite.